All right, so we got part two. I enjoyed making the last video, so we're gonna go crazy with this one. There's a lot more search terms in this video. Depending on how long it takes me to research these, this might be a longer video. But I mean, the last video was only like seven minutes, so I guess it won't really matter much. I know you saw the warning, but do not watch this video if you don't have a mind of steel. There might also be some info hazards in here as an information that once you learn it, you're kind of like on edge. <laughs> so just be careful, you know what I'm saying? But just like last video, I'm gonna make it a lot more palatable, a lot more watchable. There's a giveaway going on right now. Go ahead, go to Braided Line on Instagram. It's free drip. I'm paying for shipping and all that if you win. But you know, I don't like to waste time with these intros. Let's get this going. First thing we got on the list is our birds real. Thing is, I've actually heard about this whole entire thing. Like uh, they were talking about how all the birds could be like government like like government robots or whatever just like spying on people i want to see if that's what they're going with this drones off everybody <laughs> this is exactly what i had heard man this, this theory's been around for a good minute yes birds are real but the satirical conspiracy theory birds aren't real claims that birds are actually drones operated by the united states government theory suggests that the drones are used to spy on american citizens <laughs> 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 no, that's actually crazy. <laughs> yo, just imagine. <laughs> imagine, yo. I don't know why this is on the second layer, though. I mean, this isn't really scary. I mean, this could be something that could scare people, I guess, but... <laughs> Liar. <laughs> people got too much time in their hands, man. This is supposed to be the blueprint. <laughs> Not the blueprint. The uh, Just like a drawing of the internals now this is actually crazy man what if <laughs> y'all think birds are real that'd be pretty insane though that's hilarious i'm surprised they didn't put that on the very very bottom of the iceberg because on the very very bottom of the iceberg it's just like joke entries like the uh the original design of sonic and stuff like that that's a nice first term it's pretty funny blowfly girl that actually sounds pretty crazy horribly scarring story about a girl who did terrible things to her own body oh boy some of these are gonna take me forever where the hell's my VPN at? Debbie's page. I have some pretty serious problems. I already know it. I get emails from people rather unkindly reminding me of that. But trust me, I already know. For a long time, I wanted to myself. I used to be a... I also used to be very promiscuous, but not anymore. I haven't had sex with anyone in about seven years. Goddamn. Anyways, I'm 23 now. I've learned to live with myself, and I've found other outlets for whatever is wrong with my head. I get off on hurting myself. Get off on things that normally disgust people. Sometimes I do really nasty things and have to go to the hospital. He's like... Sh Insects and rodents make me... This is me. Longest time I fantasized about maggots. Maggots that made me come. <laughs> That's crazy. When I put it on the web page, I never considered it actually trying it. And this web page. Never considered actually trying it. But after a while, I kind of got obsessed with the idea. After I finally worked up the courage, I went through with it. I posted sort of a diary on this page. And after it was over, I wrote out the entire experience. If you really want to know how low I get, click on the link below and read it. Normal person don't. It's really disgusting. You know what I'm gonna click on? Yeah, sure. Oh fuck! Oh my god! It's like this is the rabbit hole maggot thing. The blowfly, Clephora vomitoria, strikes the odor of decaying meat, garbage, or other non-living organic matter. Blowflies can lay hundreds of eggs within four to six days. The maggots molt several times. It can grow up to 12 to 15 millimeters, especially in a warm, humid environment. I thought about what it must be like fantasizing about it over and over again for such a long time, and now I'm so ready. I can't wait much longer. I must go through with it. I must offer myself to them, and I know just how I'm going to do it. There's a restaurant near where I live that is closed on Sundays. The dumpster behind the restaurant is surrounded by a fence to hide it from customers, but the fence also makes it really secluded. That dumpster always seems to be swarming with flies and it always stinks. On a warm Sunday, soon I hope I'll overcome my diet, disgust and climb into that dumpster. I mean, okay, I guess it makes sense because she says she gets off on hurting herself and stuff like that. So I guess it's natural for her to be disgusted by it. But she's trying to get over it. Makes sense, I guess. Stuff like this doesn't gross me out. It's just like strange with the constant movement of the maggots inside of me, but it was time to go. Time to go. <laughs> What you mean time to go? How you gonna leave with all the motherfuckers in you? That's crazy. That's wild. So she said, fuck it. I'm gonna keep them shits in me. That's crazy. And right then I could hold back the revulsion of what I'd just done. No longer holding myself up against the side of the dumpster. I threw up. I also noticed the maggots seem to be. This is supposed to be page three or three. So I was reading a novel all the way through at once, which I actually do sometimes. She left me alone, hoped 
she didn't smell anything. I surfed the web for a while that night. How did the parents not realize that like something's wrong with her? How's this not hurt? That's all I remember until I woke up in the hospital right about that later. Damn. That was a pretty crazy story. For whatever reason, I did end up reading the whole thing. Up to the point to where she woke up in a hospital, basically. Long story incredibly short. It's pretty much this girl who had sexual intercourse with maggots. Trying to keep it kind of PG. And that was Blowfly Girl. John Wayne Bobbitt. I hope this one doesn't take nearly as long to research. American former couple married on June 18th, 1989, whose relationship received international press coverage 1993. And she severed John's damn the steak knife while he was asleep in bed, successfully surgically reattached. After he then went to sleep, she got out of bed, went to the kitchen for a drink of water. She got an eight inch carving knife in the kitchen counter, turned to the bedroom, pulled back the bed sheets and cut off his pe Fuck. Can't imagine. Dude, a hole in it. She threw it. <laughs> she threw it out the window into a roadside field on Maplewood Drive. She eventually stopped and called 911, telling them what she had done and where it could be found. John was found after an exhaustive search and after being washed with antiseptic and packed in saline ice. He was reattached in the hospital where he was treated. The operation took nine and a half hours. So he was working a construction job in Buffalo and stepped on a nail. He lost a toe on his right foot due to another infection from another accidental cut. That's the cut. I'm surprised TMZ's posting that one. Oh, is that it? Editorial stock photo. Is that real? I think it's, I think that's real. I think that's the real one. Besides Blowfly Girl, this hasn't really been that bad. So basically he had his glizzy chopped by his ex-wife and then later on he had to have his toes amputated due to a construction accident. So that's John Wayne Bobbitt. Next up we got Abandoned Crinkly Bottom Theme Park. What's so bad about this? Abandoned Mr. Blobby Theme Park. I guess this could be creepy to some people. I don't know if I'm supposed to be reading further into this, but I mean, this isn't really bad. It's just like... The images could be kind of unsettling, I guess, to some people. But for the most part, I mean, this isn't really bad at all. Yeah, it's straight up abandoned, so it's like really dirty and all that. But this shouldn't even be on here. This should be like... I mean, if... If anything, they should have put this in like the first layer. This shouldn't even be on the iceberg, I don't think. Unless there's some weird stuff going on here that I haven't found. Yeah, that one had no business being on this iceberg in my opinion. I think like it wasn't even like crazy or bad or nothing like that. I mean, I guess it could be creepy to some people to see like abandoned stuff like that, but it's not like there was anything going on there. I mean, not documented at least. Hopefully this is something that won't take nearly as long to research as the last two. These last two have just been horrible. Okay, not, not the last two. Between the abandoned park and Blowfire Girl, those took forever to research. All right, Cordyceps fungus. I feel like I've heard of this, but no idea. Well, them things little. Damn. That's probably where I heard of it from, actually. Cordyceps fungus. Because they were saying that The Last of Us was like one of the very few zombie situations that could actually happen. Whether that's true or not, I haven't really done research on that. There is one fungal species capable of infecting people that scientists think may have resulted from warming temperatures called... Canada Auris. It wasn't even known to science till 2007, but in 2011 and 12, it was suddenly found on three different continents. All right, we're gonna go to the CDC. From this long ass yap fest, no vertebrae cordyceps host exists, and the evolutionary path leading there would probably require tens of thousands of years. Other brain modifying or brain occupying pathogens do exist, however, such as rabies virus, perhaps the most typical. So they're saying the last of us probably isn't happening anytime soon, so that's cordyceps fungus. Mirror hand sounds crazy. <laughs> that sounds like some shock value stuff. Ah. So that's what mirror hand is. That's wild. I mean, wouldn't they just like do surgery to like I've never seen that before. I mean most of the stuff I've never seen before, but I've never seen this. They never even knew this is possible. You know that Ben 10 character that's got like four arms? Imagine instead of having four arms, you just have like extra fingers. These haven't even been that bad, man. Like, if anything, they should have switched the first and second layer. This second layer hasn't been bad at all. All right, that's Mirror Hand. I'm on the future. I saw a video of this actually on YouTube. It's like way, way, way far into the future, like millions of years. Basically, the Earth is around for maybe, I don't know tens, hundreds of thousands of years or something like that and eventually just blows up and then you got all these black holes and stuff coming and going and stuff like that. It's just, you know what I'm saying? 
But I wonder if it's gonna be different than that. Yeah, this is just this is just info hazard stuff, basically. Look, I was way off with the years. They're saying a billion years until the end of the earth. But I mean, like, why would we even care about that? You know, that's a billion years later. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we're gonna barely live a hundred years. Like, these are just stupid. What are we looking at? Is that the, is that the top? I guess that's supposed to inflict some sort of existential dread. But I mean, they're not doing a great job of it because why would I care about anything past 100 years from now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be dead as hell. <laughs> That's timeline of the far future. Yeah, it, this layer has been trash so far. Syriac English animator. Okay, here we go. What's this about? The bizarre short web animations. <laughs> hey, what is this? Man? Oh, it gets worse. <laughs> Not really worse. Worse isn't the right word for it. How do you think of this stuff? I don't know. Okay, I feel like this isn't the worst one. I want another worst one. This one looks pretty crazy. This is a song. Oh, no, never mind. I just curious about that one. Based off that song. <laughs> Did he give y'all nightmares? That is super random. Okay. So Syriac, just a bunch of surrealism. This layer has been trash so far, I ain't gonna lie. They definitely should have swapped these two. The first and the second layer. Negleria Valery. Brain eating Amoba. Valery. It's found around the world often in warmer, hot, fresh water, lakes, rivers, and hot springs. It's commonly found in lakes and southern tier states that has caused infections in more northern states, including Minnesota. And the amoeba grows best in warmer, hot water. Oh, damn. So basically, don't swim. <laughs> how many swimmers I got watching this? So basically, just microorganisms. I can see how people can kind of like get scared over stuff like this. Lots of info hazards in this one. The far future one wasn't really good. I mean, unless that for some reason scares you. I mean, it's a billion years before anything even remotely tragic is going to happen. Yeah, this hasn't really been crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that's funny as hell, actually. Damn. They really trying to scare you with this, uh, with this iceberg entry. They say in sentence of this, Headache, fever, nausea, or vomiting. So if you got any of these symptoms, you automatically have a brain-eating microorganism. So, uh, <laughs> it's G's. <laughs> Stiff neck, confusion, lack of attention to people and surroundings. This is why you can't search up your symptoms. Because <laughs> Google's going to pull up bullshit like this. All right, that's Fowlery. Toes without nails. Again, I don't know why anybody would want to search this. We're going to do it anyways. Just like last video, if you have like a feet phobia, I can definitely imagine how this would... Creep somebody out, but I'm chilling. It just looks like a very poorly animated foot. <laughs> like if a fifth grader tried to draw like a foot with like the toes and all that, and they just forget the nails, that's pretty much what this looks like. But you got some nasty ones in here. But they got nails though, that's the difference. This layer has been child's play so far. Geoduck mukbang. That sounds kind of crazy. <laughs> I've seen this. Like what even is it? What is that? about to eat that whole thing, huh? That's like a clam, huh? Ooh. Mm. You don't look good. Boyfriend trees, that's crazy. Hey, excuse me, yes, but order one sea cup, please. I wonder what she did to her husband. Not now, some mommy's got <laughs> gotta go weird shit for her that one. She looks way too happy doing this. <laughs> Just 
shit. Why is she dipping in the sauce? <laughs> the sauce didn't even get on it. It's an interesting niche for videos like that. I couldn't sit there and watch somebody eat. That's Geo Duck Mukbang. This thought would be interesting. Anti abortion propaganda. Anti abortion propaganda. Oh, yeah. Nah, this actually gets kind of crazy. I've seen stuff. I've seen stuff like this. They be going crazy with it, just like uh, how Peta goes crazy with like the uh, the animal stuff like that. They be showing all that Let's graphic. I know exactly where they're going with this. Yikes! Yeah. Don't want to do this. Oh yeah, here we go. We're in the rabbit hole now. Damn, are these real? I don't even look real. Yeah. Damn. What I want to know is why do they take pictures of this shit and put it on the internet? I mean, I get it, but you know how much you got to go through just to like actually <laughs> take these pictures and post them online. Most of these are part of like blogs and stuff like that. Damn. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, I think it's just crazy the amount of effort that people put into these blogs and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, it has a lot of fetuses. That's anti-abortion propaganda. Hagfish. Can't imagine what this is. Hagfish, the only known living animals that have a skull but no vertebrae column. Although they do have rudimentary vertebrae. Hagfish are known for their ability to produce slime, a clear, thick gel that looks like an egg. Looks like egg white. But it's substantial and cohesive, it's viscous enough that you can hold it, you can pick it up in a glob, stretch it out in a sheet and drop it, and nothing will be on your skin. I imagine I don't have to blur this out, but it almost looks like those mud puppies, but a very snake-like version of that. Damn, they look like, they look like big worms. I want to see a video, Loki. But it's no ordinary a second. Yo, that slime's crazy. The slime is made of mucus, but it's no ordinary snot. It's chock full of special protein threads that look like balls of yarn under a microscope. Huh. Once they hit seawater, those proteins unspool without tangling. That's wild, actually. Like a bunch of big worms, basically. Worms with skulls. It's interesting. That's hagfish. Rocco's basilisk. I do know what this is, actually. So it's basically like an AI system from the future, and it ends up if you didn't help develop it. Roko's Bacillus posits a future scenario where a super intelligent AI capable of transcending human intellect might punish those who were aware of its potential emergence but chose not to contribute to its creation. So basically it's just like a thought experiment. So I'm sorry if stuff like that scares you, but you shouldn't be watching this in the first place if that gets to you. Alright, that's Roko's Bacillus. Trauma 2017, I have no idea what that is. Four friends partying in a house in the middle of nowhere, brutally attacked by a man, his son, forcing the remaining women to take advantage upon them. I mean, I ain't gonna sit here and watch the movies that they have on the iceberg, but we'll try to see if I can find more of the controversial parts of these. Oh wait, there's a trailer? Looks like a Serbian film copycat, basically. Yeah, I ain't watching no movies. I don't really care to. Trauma 2017, anything on 5050? I actually know about this. It's a subreddit. The post will be like blurred. It'll either be like a safe for work post or a not safe for work post. Then you would click on it at your own risk. I'm gonna go with a couple of these, see what happens. Peanut butter cake with too much icing or toilet filled with That is a peanut butter cake. All right. Strawberry shortcake. Or a bloody knee. That is a knee. A uh, yummy birthday cake or a dead body. It's a good looking cake. A severed hand inside of the forest, a mushroom inside the forest. It's a nice mushroom. My question is where do these people get these images? You know what I'm saying? Like. How much time you gotta take to like go on the internet and find these crazy pictures and stuff? The perfect brownie or a giant splinter? Damn! That is a big ass splinter! How does that even happen? <laughs> a really nice hot dog or a second degree burn? That looks like a burn. That's a burn. Yeah, that's crazy. Cheese or vomit. 
I don't like no damn cheese. That is cheese. <laughs> All right, last one is on the main page. Discord or bloody toenail. That's Discord. As you can imagine, those posts can get a lot worse, but I mean, those are pretty simple. That's anything on 50-50. Next up, we got hypergranulation tissue. Never heard of this. Hypergranulation tissue, also known as overgranulation or proud flesh, is a common complication that occurs when too much tissue grows on the wound bed. It can appear as raised, moist, red, shiny, or cauliflower-like mass that protrudes above the surrounding skin. Hypergranulation tissue can occur in many types of wounds, including burns, pressure ulcers, surgical wounds. What do these images look like? Oh, yeah. Damn, what's that? That's his arm. Yeah, he's gonna have to take my arm off at that point. That's crazy. I don't know what kind of reference I'm gonna put on this instead. Interesting. That one looks pretty bad. Yeah, you just have to take my foot off. For the most part, this layer has just been so bad. Hypergranulation tissue, the Copenhagen interpretation. I've heard of this, I think. The Copenhagen interpretation asserts that a system is not in any of its allowable states or alternatively that it's in all of its allowable states simultaneously. Furthermore, a particle does not have a trajectory involving a definite location and velocity as a function of time. Yeah, because I'm fucking retarded, apparently. If you study a bowling ball with the equations of classical mechanics, they will tell you exactly where the ball is going to be at some time in the future, no questions asked. In contrast, the quantum mechanics can only give the future location as a probability. Given all the information, there's a chance it'll be here at point A, there's also a chance it'll be here at point B. Now you can do a series of measurements and confirm that the ball really is sometimes an A, sometimes a B. The question that arises before you did each measurement, where was the ball really at? Well, it seems obvious. You can see it right there in front of you. The ball is where you measured it. This is the realist interpretation. But if this were true, it implies that there's something missing from the theory of quantum mechanics. If it were a complete description of reality, then the theory should be able to tell you with 100% certainty that the ball really was at B or A, but you're stuck with probability. On the other hand, let's say the ball wasn't really at either A or B, it was at neither, but the act of measuring it forced it to choose. Okay, so I understand this now. This is more info hazard shit. The whole idea is just everything is just probability. Like me, I can drop dead right now from a random heart attack. Is that likely? No, but it's possible, you know what I'm saying? So I guess knowing about this experiment, knowing about this concept should kind of like scare you, I guess, or make you paranoid. It took me a minute really to understand this, but yeah. There was a lot of yapping going on. They were kind of just like going around the point. That's the Copenhagen interpretation. Last one, we have the vagina dentata. Hoping I can say that without getting Ad limited. I don't even think I want to see this, to be honest. Vagina dentata is a folk tale tradition in which a woman's vagina is said to contain, <laughs> contain teeth. Ugh. Ah. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a folk tale tradition in which a woman's vagina is said to contain teeth with the associated implication that sexual intercourse might result in injury, masculation, or for the man involved. The topic of vagina dentata may also cover a rare medical condition affecting the vagina, in which case it is more accurately termed a vaginal dermoid cyst. So it's basically just like an old tale about vaginas having teeth. That's vagina dentata. That wasn't too bad. I feel like the first and second layer should have been swapped low key because the first layer had a lot more shock value in it. The second layer had a lot of info hazard in it. That was, that's probably why they put a lot of that in the second layer. Just a lot of that stuff that you don't even know until somebody tells you. And then now you're just like walking around paranoid or experiencing some sort of existential dread. You know what I'm saying? But let me know if y'all want a part three.